It is the game, the week, the rivalry, and we welcome in the Anthony Bellino. You see him every morning right here on BCSN, the X's and Bros Show. Anthony, thank you for spending part of your Thanksgiving week with us. Oh, Mark, it's a pleasure. You know, it's Thanksgiving. It's a holiday. What else would we have to do besides like three football games, a couple basketball games? I mean, why not? Let's do a little TV here. You know, what else would we be doing? Hey, I've always said Thanksgiving is about faith, family, food, football, and friends. So we're going to hit all those boxes tonight as we talk about Ohio State and Michigan. Before we get to the game, let's clean up last week. What a performance by the Wolverines, particularly in that third quarter against Maryland. They controlled that entire game, but in the third quarter, they really showed an explosiveness we haven't seen offensively for quite some time from the Wolverines. You know, looking at what had taken place in Columbus with Ohio State and Michigan State, my biggest concern, uh, because I actually made the road trip to Cleveland for the Browns-Lions game, so I was blessed at least with four quarters of good football because we watched Michigan State-Ohio State ahead of time. And as the Ohio State game continued on the all I could think about was what we need for Michigan is we need to be able to see them put up a big number let's not struggle here and, and have a Saturday where we're having a game that's like a 28 to 7 or or a 27 10 kind of final like I need to see this team manufacture some points and do so in a hurry and a lot of it and I thought that this game from Michigan was really one of those games that we have been waiting to see from them against an inferior opponent all season long we were waiting for them to open up the floodgates blow the doors off of somebody when you look at Maryland with with five wins it's an inferior opponent but we needed to see Michigan have that kind of performance they handled the game from start to finish you mentioned that third quarter I, I actually I take it right back to the beginning of the football game you know being able to go 14 to nothing against Maryland in that first quarter 10 to 3 in that second quarter walk in 24 to 3 at halftime and still come out and put up four scores in the third quarter coming out of halftime and not being satisfied was actually very important for me to see as a Michigan fan because I don't know that I've seen that in other games where they have come out of the break like they did against Maryland now I will admit Maryland shot themselves in the foot tell the uh, Tegla wow Talia Tungavailoa made some plays there or missed some plays there that C.J. Stroud is not going to miss, right? He missed some throws. His receivers dropped some passes uh, that could have been could have been completed. And it's kind of like, okay, if these throws are on target, if your receiver could touch it, he's got to catch it. Ohio State is not going to make those kinds of mistakes that Maryland made. So the Terps did kind of hurt themselves a little bit throughout this football game. But it was nice to see Michigan come out of halftime completely unsatisfied and actually score more points in the third quarter than they did in the entire first half, which was a dominant first half for the Wolverines. A very good showing. I thought that the statistic uh, that is that is out there right now of Donovan Edwards, he had 10 catches for 170 yards and a touchdown. He has more 100-yard games at Michigan than Donovan Peoples-Jones did. How crazy is that? Oh, and by the way, that was Donovan Edwards' first 100-yard game. So it's kind of a testament to where this offense is at, uh, being able to hopefully try to extend the ball a little bit more downfield, push the ball, get the speed and space kind of operating with some of their athletes. You mentioned Donovan Edwards. No Blake Corm against Maryland. He did dress. He was there. They chose not to play him, give another week of rest at this point. Jim Harbaugh not willing to say whether or not Blake Corm is going to be able to go, but the way Donovan Edwards performed, I'm, I'm not going to say you won't miss Blake Corm, but it gives the Wolverines another option. That's something else that Ohio State has to prepare for for this week with Donovan Edwards. I really, I really like it. I like it a whole lot. I'm not going to lie. I, I just, I think that not playing Blake Corm last week against Maryland is the correct call. Uh, you know, and it doesn't if he's like, hey, coach, I'm good to go. I'm feeling better. No, I don't want him out there. I, I need I need everything you got for the four quarters against the Buckeyes. So we'll rest you, and then we'll, we'll, we'll keep it under wraps. We're going to play this just like a poker hand. You don't know if Blake Corum's going to be there or if he's not going to be there. And Hassan Haskins, you know you're going to get a healthy dose of Hassan Haskins. But if Blake Corum is good to go and they rested him for the Maryland game, I think that that's the right call to keep Ohio State on from a game plan standpoint uh, defensively. Keep them on their toes a little bit, right? Give them one more wrinkle, one more layer of concern that they are going to have to be prepared for. I like the, the quotes that came out Monday, uh, you know, from some of the Michigan players, like we're, we're tired of talking. We just want to go out there and do it. And I think that there is a little bit of that desperation when you start to look at the, the, the matchup coming up on Saturday because of how dominant Ohio State has been, you know, throughout the course of this rivalry in the last decade plus it has not been good, right? It has not been kind. It was not quick. We did not enjoy it. Like it was an absolute disaster. And it seems like every year, and especially the last two years, now they've had some one possession games, some one score games, you know, say in the last decade or so, but the last two years, 
Ohio State's full explosive offense was out there for four quarters, and it looked like they enjoyed the process of absolutely demoralizing Michigan. I think that that's something the Wolverines need to take into consideration when preparing for this game, that Ohio State is going to try to lay it on you, and you have to be prepared for that, right? And, and how does Ohio State game plan for Michigan now with Donovan Edwards? A kind of a newer wrinkle, right? We've seen flashes, but nothing like we saw last week. I think it's a huge positive because you still have Cornelius Johnson. You still have Dalen Baldwin. You know, you still have, you know, Roman Wilson and Andre Anthony. So it's been different guys at different moments collectively kind of showing out one week at a time. And I think that that is good because it shows your offensive versatility that they can go different places. They can go tight end, wide receiver, running back. They have some different options there that you need to prepare for. Arguably the best teams Jim Harbaugh has had at Michigan were 2016, 2018. Obviously, both of those teams lost to Ohio State, but both of those games were played in Columbus. This year, a strong Michigan team playing in Ann Arbor. Is that going to make a difference for the Wolverines playing in the big house against the Buckeyes? Well, here's the one thing about Ohio State. Their fans travel really well. Like, I was shocked to see Ann Arbor, Maryland. I don't know if you know that that's a city, but it's a city now. The way that that blue wave took over uh, the entire Maryland stadium, it was beautiful to see because I've seen that firsthand, and I've seen Ohio State and the way that they travel. I've seen Buckeye fans really just run all over Ann Arbor uh, like wild, and, and there's a strong message out there from Michigan that is, hey, do not sell your tickets. Like, if you have tickets to that football game, don't try to make a buck. You know that Ohio State fans are willing to pay premium to get there to Ann Arbor, and that's, that's a message, and it's concerning that you actually have to say that out loud. Don't sell your tickets. I am. I like the fact that it is at home because you get your no, your normal home routine and you don't have to worry about traveling. Uh, but it, outside of that, you know, Ohio State, the way that they travel with their fan base, they're going to try to get into Michigan just like they did in the most recent contest. And you're going to hear OHIO and you, you, you just you got to try to prevent that as much as possible. And right? I'm looking at it from like the, the 12th man sort of standpoint, if you will. Ohio State travels well. Michigan being at home is a positive but they 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 need this one, Mark. They really do because you know now you're in that sort of that strange space. But through 11 games, you're 10 and one. But one of, you you beat Wisconsin, you, you beat Penn State, but you lost to Michigan State. If you lose to Ohio State, how do you swallow the pill of is the season a success or not? When the measuring stick is Columbus, and after what they did to Michigan State last week, C.J. Stroud, my goodness, young man, take it easy on them. I mean, oh, I, I, who knows when a game is over at halftime? against an opponent that's in the top 10, an opponent that is a common opponent with Michigan. That let's say, you know, Michigan might match up better because they have a little bit more ability to rush the passer than Michigan State does. So CJ Stroud and then company, they'll have to be aware of that. But the way that Ohio State can run the football, the success that Michigan State had running the football. Is that the Kenneth Walker difference? Look at how Ohio State's defense neutralized Kenneth Walker in that football game. I think that the score had something to do with that where Michigan State began to press a little bit and kind of got away from the run game, thinking that you can score 21 points on one possession that you, you can't, by the way. You know, try to stick to your guns in, in, in your strengths as much as possible. But Michigan's a better matchup defensively than Michigan State is against Ohio State. The question now becomes Ohio State's defense against Michigan's offense. Over the summer, Jim Harbaugh said he was going to get the Michigan program back to being competitive, beating Ohio State, or die trying. There's been a lot of talk about how Michigan has re-emphasized this game. One of the tangible ways is the Ohio drill. A, every practice, they begin with a very physical drill with the ones going up against the ones hitting each other. And Jim Harbaugh said this game is going to be like Woody and Bo. It's going to be about tackling and blocking. What are the ways you have seen Michigan re-emphasize the game throughout this season? Well, I think that, uh, that there's been a lot of talk about it. You know, and, and I think that from the players and the coaching staff, you've heard the game, the rivalry mentioned, which hasn't necessarily always been, you know, the truth, uh, you know, in years past. And you look at the way that Ohio State kind of approaches the rivalry. It is the number one game on the schedule. It matters. They give out the gold pants. They have the clock on the wall. You know, they they don't, you know, they, they're going to, and they're going to miss some M's at some point. They cross out the M's all over campus. Their fans won't put an M in any of their tweets. They're going to miss some of those too. And a spell check is hard. Uh, but you have, you have all of this emphasis on beating Michigan and it just hasn't been the same. And this year, I do feel with that drill, with the way that coaches have talked Talked about you know each week still preparing for Ohio State each week. I think that that is a, that is important. Players being really well aware of what they need to do, what needs to be accomplished. At the end of the day, 
it's still a football game. Oregon went to the shoe and beat Ohio State. Oregon, they got messed up by Utah pretty bad this past weekend, and it knocked them. It's going to knock them way out of the polls. Uh, but you look at the way that it, you, if you approach it to where you think that this is some un, unpenetrable force, right, the, the, that's not a good way to mentally handle it. There's still kids your age. It's still a football game. At the end of the day, it is exactly about blocking and tackling. Can you get to C.J. Stroud, Kinejabo, and Aiden Hutchison, Michigan fans, enjoy them while it lasts? Can they find a way to get to the quarterback, to pressure him, to make him uncomfortable? because if you give him time to knit a sweater which is exactly what Michigan State did he's going to pick you to pieces like that's just the way that it is also very interesting how the defense adapts and adjusts to what Ohio State is trying to do throughout the game something we saw Don Brown struggle with very much so very interested interested to see how the new staff adapts to this because I think the first possession of the game is very important now whether Michigan scores or not or is forced to punt regardless of that it doesn't really matter what happens when Ohio State gets that first possession can you force them to punt or do they score if they score is it a field goal or is it a touchdown and how do you not allow that to dictate what you want to do I thought that Michigan State did that I thought that once Ohio State punched him in the mouth they panicked you cannot it is a four quarter football game you have to find a way to control the ball keep Stroud and company off the field and when they do get on the field pressure them but don't allow that first drive to dictate the next three hours of the day one of the football truisms is it's a battle of the trenches and I think a lot of people are looking forward to the matchup you kind of alluded to that Ohio State offensive line going up against Aiden Hutchison and David Ojabo I think that's going to be where this game is going to be decided uh, very much so and I, and I honestly think that with all the concern on those two, now is a really good day, a uh, really good game, a really good day to have other people have an impact on the football game. Because look, Aiden Hutchison is everything that he was built to be. And I think that was a little bit of a knock against Rashawn Gary, right? Is the fact that where were the statistics to back up all the hype? And it's like, oh, he's been double teamed. Well, Aiden Hutchison gets double teamed too. David Ajabo is getting a lot more attention too. But what that does is that opens up the opportunity for guys like uh, Nakai Hill Green, guys like Josh Ross to be able to go out there and make plays because all of that concern is going to be on the edges what kind of force can Michigan bring up the middle can they attack the a gap a little bit you know the, between the center and the guard can they get in there can they try to design something differently because I don't think we've seen the full complement of what Michigan's defense wants to do I think that bit them a little bit against Michigan State I don't think that we've seen the full complement of what Michigan's offense wants to do and I and I, I truly believe that we might have seen a little bit more against Maryland I think we've seen flashes of it but I think that Michigan looks a lot different on Saturday and I think that they've been trying to approach each week with a specific game plan in mind for that team all the while still keeping a couple of their reserves that they know that they want to break out on Saturday so although I want to focus on Aiden Hutchison and David Ajabo I think it's that next level how do the linebackers perform and what kind of matchups do they get in the pass game how can they be effective there not only rushing the quarterback but also if, if asked to drop in coverage can they cover well can they tackle in the open field and when it's time to send the dogs can they blitz and can they get to the quarterback all right, thank you very much, Anthony Bolino, host of the X's and Bro Show. You see it every morning right here on BCSN. Anthony, thank you. Thank you, Mark.